This tutorial was brought to you thanks to the supporters on the screen. Check out tapjiles.com to find more Dreams resources, donate to support my work, or engage my services to get private instruction or help on a project one on one. With cameras, there's a few ways of uh, animating them, and I'll just put them on a timeline so it's easier. So, one is to just put on a camera. You can actually scope in using L1 and X. And now I'm in the camera, and you can see on the end of the imp there's a camera icon. So then I, if I move it over here, now that camera's over there with that angle. And if I make another camera over here, then I can have that angle like that. And now if I play, then it'll go over to the first camera, and then it'll transition to the second camera. And it actually uses, for the duration of that transition, is this transition time. So if I make it really long, uh, then it goes to the first camera, and then when it goes to the second camera, it takes forever to get there. Uh, so much so that it actually, the, uh, the timeline goes past it before it actually t gets a chance to get there. So then it stops transitioning. So if we made this, so this is lasting f two seconds on the timeline. If we make it last two seconds, then it will just about make it in time, sort of thing. But if we made this last longer, then it will be able to make that last longer. So now we can make it last five seconds. And now it will be very slow, but it will eventually get there. So you can kind of do camera moves like that. The problem is if you want it to be like one smooth motion, let's say we wanted three positions on this timeline. So let's just make an, a middle one. So first we're going to go around here and then we're going to go up there. So let's adjust that to be in the same angle and just over it like that. So now if we kind of butt them up against each other like that. So we just like clearly transition one to the other kind of thing. So you could try and like overlap this and then overlap that maybe. Let's see, and it doesn't really give that smooth feel. Um, it's still, it's, it's very hard to get these uh, these like fade in transition times and all that kind of stuff to work kind of perfectly. So if we look at the timeline, we can see roughly what's happening. So um, the latest camera to be on kind of takes over and starts the transition to that. So um, even if this was like mid transition, so this is two seconds long. If this was two seconds long in here, then it should transition until the end. Put this one, the first one, onto cut, so that when we play, um, when we go into play mode, it will just be instantly be in that view, like that. Yeah, so it kind of starts blending a little bit, but it's very hard to get it to actually be smooth. So another way of doing this is to use a single camera, and we use keyframes to move it. So you could, like, grab this. So let's put it there, and then. Make another keyframe and move it over here, and then L1 and X between them to blend through. And I'll just uh, expand this out so that it stays there for a bit. So it's nice and smooth. Or you can just grab a keyframe and scope into the camera and adjust it like that. And now it's remembered that you've moved that camera to that new position. Let's do that. So it smoothly goes through and you can actually line a load of these up and then just stay in the camera and adjust the whole animation in one go. So if you add empty keyframes and don't record anything into them and then just copy these. So L1 and R2 is to copy and then you let go of L1 and you can let go of R2 and now you've got a copy. Um, to make multi-clone you can multi-clone just as normal with any other object. So I can press right on the D-pad or left and it will go beyond or between. So now I have a load of keyframes 
and we'll expand that out and we'll just add the blends with L1 and X between them. Um, so let's go here and scope into the camera. Put that down there. And now I can use L1 and right to go to the next one or L1 and left to go to the previous one. So I'm just going to move the camera further around here and then maybe down here and back to right, right in front of it. And I'll just decide to end the animation there. Let's play that. So we go around. Oh, I think we missed one. So sometimes you might accidentally miss one. So let's just move that around again. And you can actually kind of go squiffy, you can kind of go like that. Um, I'm holding R1 to grab cam and then just tilting the controller and it actually affects the grab cam. So now I can have this angled Dutch Dutch angle camera view thing. So let's see how that looks. Whoa. Wouldn't be good for VR. And there you go. And you can actually see the path it's going to take by hovering over this or pressing X to select it. With cameras, sometimes it puts the path way down, but this is kind of the line the camera is taking. So you can see it's kind of going very straight down like that. So if you're not keen on that part, you can adjust it. I think it's because that's not kind of far over enough. That should affect the actual... Yeah, so now we've got a more sweeping motion over like that. So if you have problems with how these are smoothing out, you can just adjust the position of the keyframes and stuff and that will affect that kind of line that you you uh, get from it. Alternatively you can turn this off um, by doing this, turning smoothing off for that keyframe. Then it gives you the preview of this up to the non-smoothed keyframe. So it's got this nice curve. And then from here is like from here to here is completely straight because the smoothing is off. And then it has this other smoothed section over here. So then you'll probably notice a kind of jarring corner to it. Like that, so you can kind of feel when, when that starts and ends. So one problem is though, that now if I move the timeline, the camera gets moved as well, um, because I've keyframed it, I guess. Even if you want to put it into a chip or something, it won't remember where it was and put it back. It's just now in a different place. Where is it? It's way over there for some reason. So that's a bit of a problem. So if you want to use a camera like this, a single camera and move it around, I recommend just leaving the camera in the scene. Just pop it out like that. The problem is now these keyframes and stuff don't make much sense. So you'd have to kind of adjust it uh, to wherever the timeline was. So I'm going to use grid snap and then use L1 and triangle on this. But first I'll leave a little marker maybe. Just another gadget nearby. So I want to put the camera next to that. So let's try and pop that out there and move this there. I don't know if this will work at all. Let's find out. So that seems to kind of work. Um, your mileage may vary. Or you can just start off with the camera in the scene and just not worry about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. Go to patreon.com slash tapgiles to get 5 hours of tutorials early for $3. Here's a preview of what you can learn if you choose to become a supporter.